Hey everybody watching, before I start the podcast I'd like to give a super special shout out to all of our viewers who support us over on Patreon. Without your guys support it would be so much harder to make this kind of long term content. If you're new and you like the content, consider going over and supporting us over on Patreon. Links down below. Anyways, with that being said, thank you everybody and enjoy the podcast. See ya! I love the part when I was like, ah! <laughs> Give me a little kamikaze! Give me a little bonsai! Wake up in here! They're going to the land where the code of the ninjas began. But I said... You are not Japanese. I can do it now. For the first time, the true story... Welcome Japan. 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 I'm nothing but a worthless gaijin. Hey everybody out there on the YouTube stores, this is Tiko Sam once again coming to you live from my sexy Where Come Japan podcast here on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, wherever, uh, wherever you're viewing this or listening to it from, uh, I want to see you, thank you really deep down in the cockles for this, and this is me trying to sound cool on a podcast. How am I doing, Dave? Well. Nice. Does well, it come from your plums? It comes deep down in the, oh, it's usually coming deep down in the plums, but right now I'm got like kind of like a mucusy lung thing going on so it's it's mm. deep down in my deep in my shallow lungs it's not deep it's shallow but anyway hey guys thanks again for coming and checking us out here uh, i am joined tonight on the where come japan podcast because we're talking about ibaraki prefecture above chiba and near tokyo and tonight we're joined with my super awesome awesome great super happy John Smithy, stable income, very, very, very American, except Canadian friend, Dov Troopin. Um, even though that his name on YouTube is technically Dave, mind filling us in here? Uh, it's Dave Trippin. Dave Trippin. That is the official lingity, if you wanna, if you wanna say it that way. But I, I've grown accustomed to Dave Troopin. Yes, it's uh, grown on me like a cancerous tumor. <laughs> Dave Trappins. Yeah. See, you don't know. You're not really friends with somebody until you can never call them by their username online. Anyway, he's gonna be here. We're gonna go into like every one of our podcasts so far. We're gonna be going into. Uh, you know, more. We're gonna learn a little bit briefly about Dav and uh, his stuff here in. You know, before and after coming to Japan, then we're going to learn about the prefecture that he's in. And then he's going to share some awesome, fun stories about the prefecture, too. And, um, yeah, and then at the end of the podcast, he's going to be able to get to plug whatever he wants to plug, if he's got anything to plug there. Also, uh, yeah, again, he's a YouTuber. I'm all about plugging, plugging, plugging holes. If there's a hole, I'll plug it. That sounds slightly sexual. I love it. It's good. Hopefully we it's get more. repairs. Of basic repairs. Basic repairs. Oh, oh yes, of course. You got to fix that 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 uh, you know, the poop deck. Anyway, so so guys, uh, let's get into it. So first, Dave, why don't you uh, why don't we first get into it? what do you like to be called? I already know this, but for the viewers and listeners out there, they don't know. So what do you like to be called? Dov, Duv, even uh, Dukovny, um, you know, <laughs> what do you like to be called? Dave, Dave, I go by Dave. It, it's, it would stay, it would feel very strange. I know people get used to the handles on YouTube, but it's always funny if somebody's like Dave Trippett, I'm like, that sounds <laughs> retarded and I made it. Oh God. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Dave is fine. I go by Dave, but you know, whatever you're feeling that day provided it's not too morally <laughs> reprehensible, not then too we'll get along just me. fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Dave, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, I'm from Vancouver Island, actually. So I've kind of gone from one island to another. It's off the uh, the west coast of Canada, right there. Well, beside Vancouver, naturally, it's in the name there. Yeah, little tiny island, which has made me feel quite at home when I've come here to continue to live in the countryside because the countryside here doesn't compare to that island. I mean, when I return now, I realize finally how truly nothing was there you know it feel because you have no point of reference when you're growing up you're like ah oh, it's, yeah. it's a it's a bustling metro met metropolis it's so whatever you, it's you know they metropolis. have like five cars it's amazing yeah, yeah. But Dav, how old are you uh i just turned 32 so yeah 32 I, years yeah. 32 years young exactly took the words out of my mouth exactly that's goddamn right and dave are you married are you in a relationship if so is uh, are they Japanese? 
I am, I'm neither. I'm not married. I'm not in a relationship. I'm a free agent currently looking for a new contract. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I should include this in the questions, too. I think I'll do this from now on, too. And, uh, have you dated Japanese people? That's going to be another thing. Have you dated Japanese people? Just simple yes or no. A simple yes or no will do? Okay, yes, I have. Okay, good. I just wanted to... I'm, I put that as an extra question now from episode whatever the fuck this is. Okay, and um, Dave, how's your Japanese level? Reading, writing, etc.? Uh, I would I would say I'm basically at a point now slower than I should be, but I, I would say advanced beginner. To someone who doesn't speak the language, they'd be like, "My God, your ability!" But to anyone who has a clue, they're like, "Ah, uh, you got a long way to go, buddy." So it's it's yeah, advanced beginner. I would say I would not say that I've entered intermediate level, but I'm on the cusp. I think with a little more focus, and this year, I intend to get a private tutor that I'll I'll enter into that shortly. You should join Dave. You should join my Japanese study group. Oh wait, you oh, work hey, at nine a.m. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah, yeah, guys. If you're interested in my study group, I I do one Monday through Friday on Skype for all you lucky patrons out there. But that's uh, yeah, Dave works. I don't think he could do that. But you know, anyway. Uh, so Dave, um, before uh, let's. So how did you uh, how did you move to Japan? Well, first off, why like what? Japan? Yeah, why <laughs> come Japan? My, my this is a plug from my my buddy Radley's podcast why come japan go check his shit out he uploads once every five seconds but not one once every five seconds if you were in a nebula a nebula of very very slow time anyway he doesn't upload enough but when he, does, he doesn't upload good. that often <laughs> yeah and he's not gonna edit his shit in audition like i am right now um yeah. but uh dav like why did you move to japan if you had to pick three reasons on why like me it's just chicks nugs and grindage but what about you dav <laughs> Nearly that, nearly that. Um, it was, uh, first and foremost, it probably could have been any country where I had this great friend, I'm actually working on a video that he's in tonight, uh, where he left Canada when we were about 10 years old. He was one of my closest friends. He and his whole family went over to, to live in Japan. And as a result of that, I got really, really curious about the culture because I wanted to know where it was that my friend went. And anybody that told me about it, usually with very little information themselves, made it sound like this little fantastical place. And when you're 10 years old, that's magnified. You're like, man, that sounds crazy. Like, uh, So I got really, really interested in it. And then it kind of went in hand that afterwards, when I got older, that it didn't diminish. Because even when you get older, you're like, wow, this place is amazing. And uh, I like it so much. And it continued because... I've always been being attracted to to something that's totally alien. Like I, I'm, I don't. Maybe I could say I'm easily bored. Like I like new experiences. And where when you're in Canada, yeah, the U.S. and Canada are different. You could go into how that's the case, but really, there's so many similarities that there's as much as you get a culture shock, it's pretty mild, right? Especially like most obviously, you speak the same language. Where Japan was utterly alien and like this ripe ground to go over to some place where absolutely everything I would do would feel new and exciting and kind of have that and not fade quickly either because I mean like I've told you with the language it's it's a really long road to uh, to master these things and uh, yeah to to experience a culture that's so different I so guess I guess suppose that's too so that's because your friend moved over here and because you liked you're you're very ADHD and you like to see new shit yeah, all the time yeah yeah very, very ADHD, and because my my friend came over, and for for full disclosure, uh, as well, because I thought it would, I thought it the job is interesting. Like I came over here, um, not entirely as a means to an end. I was like, oh, that'd be crazy going into a Japanese school because when I also talk about how the culture is different, I thought that that would be a really, really cool way to experience the culture, to be a part of their public school system, because you see the way that they raise their kids, you know, that that's a very like unique experience to have in any culture. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the job did attract me for that reason as well. Okay. So, uh, Dov, why don't you tell us your hobbies and stuff? Like if you had to pick three hobbies, I, I should have asked this before for all the other people so far, but if you had three brief hobbies that you could go over, uh, what would they be? Uh, Maybe just in order of regularity that I do them, I would say it's working out and running, YouTube, and then 
I love reading, as deflating as that is. It's <laughs> I, fucking nerd. I love reading. I know, goddamn, goddamn nerd. nerd. Go back um, to your nerd school, nerdy. But then as well, you can actually, well, this will be audio, so you won't see it. But like also for when I was in high school, I used to do rowing, which for anybody who has any sense of that, it's a really, really intense uh, varsity sport. And I had no time for anything. We were training like, you know, lose your mind, get up at 530, train three times a day, that kind of thing. And when I got out of that, I had all this free time. It was funny. Like usually when people, I think they go to university, it's like their effort ramps up. Where compared to my high school, university was like a walk in the park for the, the <laughs> class load that I had. Yeah. And so I, I used that time to uh, to learn guitar. I really got into guitar and I was fortunate enough to have friends who are like really musically gifted. One of which uh, now I still like collaborate with him, write lyrics and stuff. He's an audio engineer. Uh, that guy I told you about in the video um, that I'm putting up. My friend who went over that guy I just mentioned, he's an incredible drummer. Um, he, he actually plays a few instruments, but he's a great drummer. And we did like full on, uh, like, well, I didn't do the performances, but they were like performing and stuff. And we went to jam spaces and I've got like my baby Gibson SG when I finally did get a guitar. So that, that was very near and dear and was a part of my life for like several years. But then the time that it takes to become better at editing and all these things to do with YouTube had sort of consumed my life that I, I couldn't do it anymore. But it's always there. Music is a huge passion of mine. Like, yeah, oh yeah. Anyways, without spending 30 minutes on it, music and guitar also. Okay, awesome, awesome. So now let's get into the prefecture questions from Mr. Dov Troppins over here. So first off, Dave, how did you end up actually moving to Japan and how did you end up moving to your prefecture? What's your current job right now? Japan to get to Japan was probably less interesting than how I have my job now. Japan was that same friend said, go look on Craigslist, man, if you want to move over here and you're interested in it. And I found, you know, mm -hmm. as you do, the myriad of uh, dispatch companies that are available. Yeah. Uh, I applied to a couple. I got over here. It took some time, yada, yada, yada. Here I am. But then to actually come to this prefecture was way, way more interesting because I, I had realized that there's this quick ceiling that you get with the uh, the dispatch companies. They're basically rookie meals. You get over here because they can give you a visa, but then they're going to be like, no, 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 you are utterly replaceable. There is nowhere for you to move up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I went about the business of uh, applying to a bunch of different places. And I mean, I was talking to Sam during this time, actually, and I went through over 14 interviews at different places and it seemed like I, uh, I I got so close. I mean, people were writing me like all out, like apologetic letters of like, you know, the sun wasn't quite right that day so we yeah. can't hire you. You know, your big foot's big, your left foot's bigger than your right. And then I basically, it was at that point in my effort that I was like, okay, given my effort, if I do have to leave because I'm not doing another year with these dispatch companies, I'm at peace with it because you need to, you don't want to leave any doubt that did I try and get as it was basically coming up to the point where my contract was renewing and I wasn't going to do it. And then out of the blue, because I did YouTube, one of the subscribers who I'd done a little correspondence with, I believe he asked some questions about coming over. He said, we have an opening in a direct hire position in Ibaraki where he had ended up working and said, why don't you, uh, why don't you come in and interview? So vicariously, YouTube is responsible for not only keeping me in Japan, but getting me like a job that has given me the most job satisfaction while I'm here. So that was pretty cool how I ended up. It was because of an amazing subscriber. Every subscriber counts, especially the ones that give you sweet job hookups. <laughs> yeah, dude. So you actually like, yeah, because I remember I met you originally at a party, <clears throat> a YouTube party here in Tokyo. And, um, I, I, I already had watched your videos because you kind of did long rambles like me, but you were better at it. And uh, and you ended, and I didn't know that until I met you, but you were actually living in the city that I lived in, or the town, the little village, right. the township. You, were living you knew the, the same, teachers. Yeah. I, I you was, knew the same teachers. It was the yeah. twilight zone of like, what was, like, what is going on? What are the on? odds that we worked in the same fucking town, same That's, schools or whatever? So. Yeah, that was weird. But Dave was looking for a job and like, yeah, like a subscriber reached out to him and he was like, hey, by the way, are you looking for work? Because we got a direct hire job, bitch. And uh, yeah. what's the difference between direct hire and uh, dispatch company, Dob, for all these people who do not know, are not in Marky Mark and the 
how two two major simple differences although there's a couple more uh yeah. biggest <laughs> biggest and first is that a dispatch company is essentially a middleman so when you go to take your cut of whatever work you're doing, you make far less with the dispatch company because that's where they make their money. They contract you out to a school. You don't work for them directly. So as a middleman, they take a portion of what would directly go to you. So naturally, you make more money when you work directly for a board of education. Second to that is the thing that is quite frequently in the news, which is how dispatch companies they have these huge employee brackets, like incredible amounts of people that they employ to save themselves huge amounts of money, like anybody probably would if they ran a company like that. They basically make you sign up saying that you are a 29.5 hour work week when in fact you were going to be at the schools for much more than that. But it means that they don't have to subsidize your pension or your uh, health care. And when you work for direct hire, they do. They actually pay for the because you were considered a full employee, whatever they pay for that. And so there's another not only are you making more, but you're also making more and more because you're not having to spend all that money on the healthcare system. So those are the two big ones. And then there's a bunch of other cool stuff, too. But those are the big ones. OK, so uh, so we got how Dave ended up in Ibaraki right now. And currently so you, currently you're an ALT at uh, junior high school, high school. Junior high school, that's right. Junior high school. And Dave works, so he's an English teacher in public schools here in Japan right now. Uh, and so, um, Dave, how long have you lived in Ibaraki for so far now? Ibaraki, uh, it's coming up on a year. Basically, as of uh, March, then I'll have lived here for a year. Time passed quickly. It was a good year. It was a good year. So what's uh, so let's start fluffy. How's, how's the food is there what food is from Ibaraki? Is like natto and I don't know what else. Like what? natto and natto. That's ba- natto anybody natto. I said when I was moving here. They're like, oh, natto, and that was the center of the conversation. So now that I've uh, gotten used to it, it's actually really good. All the different varieties they have. But if you were to come here as the first place you'd ever been to, and that was the sort of specialty, I think you'd be sort of put out by it because it's not something you can just jump into and love. You have to get used to it. Um, aside from that, not if you don't mind traveling a bit, it's actually really well situated for like if you go north, there's a town that's like really, really famous for tongue. And so like if you're into that kind of thing, which I, I like, I'll admit it, I like tongue. It's tasty. Cow tongue? Um, cow tongue. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No human tongue. Sexual tongue. <laughs> um, Swine tongue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and then they got like they different again. It, it extends into everything. Like they got like sake that's brewed from natto and stuff like that. Ah, huh. okay. Yeah. Well, what do you eat on a daily basis? Is it more Japanese or is it more Western? What's the, what's the Japanese food you're eating every day? I I am. I've like now I le- because they eat so much of the natto, and all I heard was good things. And I did all this research on it, and it's possibly credited to why the Japanese are so long lived beyond like that they eat seaweed and fish and stuff. Natto is a big reason for that, and so that's the most uh, that is the most Japanese thing I eat. I eat it every single day, and one of the big things I think for anybody who's not used to the idea, I'll eat that with rice and then a raw egg on top. And then natto. And for anybody who's like not in Japan, that's like the double whammy because everybody is like conditioned to believe that raw egg will kill you. Uh, where it's actually it's amazing. It's so good, and it's like it sort of makes it like way more meaty and stuff. And I'm I'm probably making a bunch of people throw up in their mouth now, but it's, it's awesome. really really good. <laughs> so you that that soy is sauce on there too, or is it just no no toppings? It's just uh, the natto <clears throat> will come with like a little bit of fish sauce and some mustard, yeah. so that mixes in well. So that's what I do. Yeah, that's my that's my most Japanese thing, and it's good. That sounds it's good. good. We got to start doing that for me at the, in, once February starts because that sounds yeah. tasty as fuck. Yeah, um, it is. So, uh, and Dave, is there any place that you like to eat out at that you didn't go to at all until you came to Japan? Maybe some place that is, uh, I don't know, everybody who I've interviewed so far, I'm like, what's some Japanese food that you like to go eat out at? And I'm not talking about your convenience store fried chicken stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about there's this, this, it's just, what's the Japanese food that you really like that isn't sushi or okonomiyaki or natto? Okay. Um, well, th- there's two. There's two that I would go for. One of them that I kind of lucked out was uh, I love basically Japanese fast food equates to ramen. And it's so much better than fast food. 
and it's cheaper and it, it doesn't matter if you're eating like the best ramen in the world it's always like 800 yen and I've got a place that's about a 20 minute drive away and there's this teacher in my school where he's a fanatic that's his thing and this place has been running for like three family generations and they have their whole family history up on the wall and nothing has changed it's the, it's that you know that continuity that the Japanese have where it's still 800 yen but it is goddamn delicious it, it's like if I want to treat myself that that's where I head out to aside from that I, I love meat on a stick and so I like uh, Torikizoku which is basically like bargain bottom prices on meat on a stick in uh, like anywhere that's a major city center in Shibuya uh, station there's like seven of them within yeah. like a five it's block a easy, rate. it's a really cheap izakaya where everything's 290 yeah. yen oh Dave are you sure there's not any other food that you're missing possibly uh I, uh, uh, it's brown, white. It's brown. It's white. White. And it's uh, it starts with a co and ends with curry. Oh, what? No, I don't eat oh, that really? much curry. No. Oh, really? Okay. Everybody so far has like fucking loved Coco Ichiban curry. I've never and, been there. Oh my god! You fucking I've been white there devil. Four oh my years. god! I know. <laughs> you yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah. Everybody like so far they were like fucking Coco Ichiban number one. Okay. Um, that's good though, guys. We got a different response. First, different response from Dov Trappins over here. Yeah. Get some hype in the chat. There's no chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some hype in the chat for Dave Troopin. Uh, yeah. So that's awesome. So Dave, are there any? Are there a lot of cool places in Ibaraki, nature-wise, city-wise, work-wise? Yeah. Um, for Alice. for me, I I like it. It's like uh, it's a it's a well known fact that Ibaraki is the least desirable prefecture in Japan. Uh, <laughs> But He's not that popular, means guys. there's like uh, there's low population density, so that's awesome. It's like really really chilled out. Mm -hmm. uh, I live really close to, or like 20 minutes by train to a city that's got like 320,000 people. It has a hilarious gaijin bar there called the Drunken Duck. So you can look that up in the city, which it's actually really good. Although I hate these, just like the hub, it's this gaijin trap where the f everything's so goddamn expensive that i yeah. hate it but but it's fun and it's good so i can go there if you want to get some ridiculous greasy western food aside from that the places that i really enjoy going to um i've done a video on it uh which is our ambition is broken that's on my channel is this mountain next to my house that you get this beautiful view of the the whole like uh, valley that I live in or whatever that's surrounded by mountains and it's it's really nice for like I say for the island boy in me that grew up in that kind of like geographically interesting place it's really really beautiful and I was ignorant of the fact when I went there the first time I thought they were cherry blossoms but they're actually plum blossoms yeah that, uh, people don't realize that plum blossoms Every single time you guys look at a pink, like a tree of pink uh, flower leaves on that, it's not actually the sakura tree. The sakura trees are white blossoms, white flowers. White flowers. <laughs> but the plum trees are pink flowers. And everyone doesn't realize that. And they bloom in March or early, like February or something. They don't bloom. Uh, only the hanami, the white flowers, <laughs> bloom at the end of March. Sorry, guys. And they, this is, and they last. Yes. And they last, not like some heartless woman who steals your heart and just leaves it fucking whore broken <laughs> um no no they they uh they yeah. last uh, yeah and that was another thing that confused me i was like damn these things are still going yeah and that's cool you go up there and everybody's chilling on the mountain looking out from the mountain surrounded and you get these like they have a name for it and you speak japanese well enough that you probably know it it's so cool when the season ends um and the wind starts blowing and it blows all the blossoms off the tree and it's it's like a snowstorm but of blossom leaves uh do you know what that do you know the name for that ah fuck it's like sakura fubuki or something it's like yeah uh, yeah some, okay yeah something that like good. where it's like the the it's the flowing like flower snow uh, you know fubuki yeah, yeah maybe yeah something like that i understand it's really beautiful yeah. So yeah. what so okay so that's a couple places and the city outside the city so, um, so Dave, and again, like, you know, if I'm, if I want to go make some friends in Ibaraki, possibly go and pick up some hot, hot, hot sex, where, where can I go? Some hot, hot sex. sex. Uh, lukewarm I, sex. <laughs> I would say without question, the place that's popular for hooking up 
is the drunken duck. Classy as that is, I think that's where people are going. Whenever, when I came, I was uh, first in a relationship and people didn't know that. And they were like, oh, single guy like you, you got to hit up the drunken duck. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, but, yes, uh, I'm going. Sounds great. But that's that's the one. But I feel like that's the first one that people say off the top of their head. But like I say, it's a big city. So there's got to be like a club there or something. So, you know, there, there's much more. My location is not good so much for the amenities that are nearby. It's that it's a chilled out area. And if you wanted to head into Tokyo... It's like a two-hour ride on the train, so you make a weekend of it, and then you're in Tokyo. You're right. You go to Rapongi, you go to something like that, and you, you have a crazy time. Well, yeah, so you can go. It's pretty easy to go to the city for the weekend kind of thing. Really? Yeah. Uh, what? So what's the? So what is the hardest part about living in Ibaraki? Weather, location, people, hot sex. What? What's the thing? Uh, the hardest thing is like one of the things that I enjoy most is I am for the interests that I have because they're to so time consuming and I'm out in the countryside. It's it's sort of it's lonesome. You get lonesome out here. So like I mean we're we're social creatures, right? We're uh, I mean that's why I'm chatting with Sam most days. Uh, it is fairly isolated, so you need to be okay with that. If you're a person who needs twenty four seven like friends coming around your door, uh, it's not a place that I would recommend for you because it is fairly isolated but yeah it's fine and it works well for me because like there's a lot of days where i couldn't i basically couldn't see somebody during the course of the week and then to repeat the same thing i just go into uh tokyo when i want to be more social hmm. that's good i i yeah i mean when when i lived in naruto we both lived in a town called naruto just like the fucking anime naruto it was uh, the kanji is uh, uh becoming east and um we lived there, and that was like you know I I I don't know if you ever went to the motorcycle shop by the by the Gusto Dave, but I, that was where my best friend like uh, Yama he worked there, and I'd go see him every day after school. I'd take my drive my car back home, go get my scooter, go there, and I just hang out with him while he fixed but just hanging out for like. I do hours. know the place. I do know the place. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that place was. But I mean, uh, yeah, it is lonely though, guys. I mean, I I would spend every weekend. I would literally leave Friday night. On the train now, Dave. I know you didn't do this because you're a good little, you're a good, you're a good Canadian. But me, yeah, I'd go on the, I'd go on the. They had a speed train from Naruto directly from Naruto all the way to Tokyo Station. And if you bought the cheapest ticket and then you go in there and then they check your ticket, you say, "Oh, I bought it with my Suica." They, you could use your Suica and then you just walk through the gate in Tokyo. And I used to do that to save ten bucks. It was a twenty dollar trip, and I'd usually for one way, and I always. And ten bucks to get to Tokyo, and then I'd go there, spend the night at a friend's house or a cafe, internet, whatever the fuck, and uh, then go clubbing or whatever. And then I'd come back Sunday morning. It was awesome. That's yes. a Shio Sai. You hop on the Shio Sai. Yeah, you remember the, the name? Yes, yeah, yeah. Shio Sai. It's uh, it's a good train. But uh, okay, so Dave, what's the what's the easiest part about living in Ibaraki? Uh, easiest part, well, thing that's really, really important for me, again, is uh, not too far from my school is an awesome gym. And if you're in the countryside in Japan, it's not a problem if you're in the city, but you really got to luck out if you're going to find a good gym anywhere near the countryside. And not only that, this is like you need more money than God to get a membership there, but it has a legit onsen. It's not like some false hot spring. It's like this is a legit full, uh, you know, from the ground as God intended uh, hot spring. Uh, oh, my God, that's, that's, that's awesome. really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. So that that's good. That that keeps me sane when I'm uh, when I'm done work and I go to the gym. I go to the onsen afterwards. So that's really, really cool. It's an awesome gym. And I've met some, like, really good people there. One guy particularly, like a true, like, spirit of Japan. His name's Tomo, Tomo-san. And he's this old dude, and it totally breaks the stereotype that old people are sheltered or, like, reserved, where he was one of the first people who talked to me there, and he's always like, kanji lesson, kanji lesson, and he'll, like, pull up this thing and, like, teach me kanji whenever I'm there, <laughs> and super chill old dude who's, like, yeah, super really, really friendly, so it's, it makes me feel like I'm part of the community, you know? Yay. So, Dave, Yay. where do we go to... If I'm going there for like three days or whatever, it's summertime or whatever, where are you taking me? Where are we going? Where are we going to go check out? What do you want to show me? 
Okay, well, first place I would take people up to is the mountain because that's really, really chill. And even like there's different levels to the mountain, which is cool. There's like the mountain that's got the base view, but then you go up this like pulled out of your imagination. If you were like, I'm going to take a winding staircase up a mountain that leads to a beautiful shrine. They got that at the top of the mountain. So you go up there and you have the whole cultural experience of going to the shrine on the top of a mountain. It's so, so cool. Um, after that, I'm a big movie buff, and about 20 minutes away is an awesome, big-ass Toho cinema, so go there for a movie. Mm -hmm. And then I lucked out one of these, like, miracles of the countryside. You can never rely on this, but I got it. Uh, walking distance, about 10 minutes away from my house, is this awesome izakaya. And, like, uh, nice. I've had a, a few people who've been around and lived in Japan for years, and they agreed. They were like, God damn it, like... The presentation of their food's amazing. The price isn't too much. Ibaraki is quite famous for their gyu, for their uh, for their beef, and they have like yeah. a great like uh, sliced beef that you can get from them. They do uh, basashi, which is uh, like horse sashimi. So if you want to be a little bit more adventurous, oh, that's that amazing. Stuff. That stuff is the bomb, dude. Oh, oh, it's 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 awesome. And the guy, like, since I've been there a couple times, of course, you get a little bit more of a relationship with the dude who's like the director, you know, the floor manager, and he's really chill. This like huge fat guy. So, like, you know, the food's good because he's, like, obviously he's dipping his toe in. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it would be it would be those three things. Grab a movie, check out that, and then uh, have an awesome night at the Izakaya because it's it's amazing. It's so good. Yeah, dude. Um, what is it? And then also, okay, so that's awesome. So where do you like to go to hang out when you're not at work and not at home, Dav? Uh, to – I've mapped out – several runs around my house so i like to go and clear my head because one thing that i didn't have and you know this as well when you live in naruto is that it's flat because it's like a little surf town yeah and penned in where i live in this area is just mountains all around you so whether you to go for a walk or go for a run or something we get the most killer clear beautiful sunsets and i go out and i clear my head and you're like running through all these like rice patties and stuff and it's really really chill so that that's where I like to go if I'm trying to put behind whatever uh, happened during the course of the day. Nice, nice. You're literally running away from your problems at that point. <laughs> <I> am, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then I come back to them at home. That's right. Yay. So uh, so okay, guys. Now we get to get into the nice, fun meat and potatoes of this, where Dave gets to share wonderful, happy, super awesome, chocolate covered rainbow sprinkles of his experience here. In Ibaraki Prefecture. So, Dave, do you have any fun stories about your time in that prefecture that you just think of off the top of your head? Well, definitely most recent would be Christmas because I've now got this uh, group of friends that live in Japan. And <clears throat> everybody came from all over the place. Uh, a friend came from uh, Chiba. A friend came from Kyoto. A friend came from south of Yokohama. Everybody came out. And we, we had an amazing night. We were doing like wicked drinking games. We, uh, we then went out to the city nearby where we'd made a reservation. We played more drinking games, get more hammered, listening to Christmas music. Boney M. There is one Christmas album and it is Boney M. And so uh, doing that in the morning, we did like a stocking thing. That was awesome. It was, uh, it was one of those forever memories right there. Forever evers. Forever evers. Yes. Dave, do you remember that I Christmas? Remember. <laughs> I remember. He remembers yes. that Christmas. Okay, so Christmas with your friends in yeah. Ibaraki. Do you have any, any – come on. I would do, do another one stuff. that was really cool. Basically, it would be going back to Naruto because yeah. I had a friend who visited me there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go around and do all this cool stuff with them. And when he came, one of the things that's good to do is because it's a surf town, we went down to the beach. And it was the perfect example of, like, spontaneous, you can't plan these kind of good times. Because, yeah. like, I'm fairly tall, but my friend makes me look small. He's, like, 6'5", so you imagine how we stand out <laughs> when we're wandering around, like, these two monster yeah. white dudes. Um, and we go down to the beach and we're having fun anyways, but then there was these people, like these Japanese dudes saw us swim and they were like, oh, you know, why come Japan? <laughs> that was like the first, <laughs> you know, so I was saying he was visiting and stuff and they were like, oh, well, we're doing some sumo. 
so you guys should totally do sumo wrestling. I could just see my friend look at me like, we're going to do sumo in Japan. And I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> and this is unrehearsed. And so we go over and we were like having these really cool sumo matches, having a blast. And then after we were doing that with them, it was they were actually there for a company barbecue. And they invited us over to the barbecue. And we were playing volleyball with them. And at that time, even more so, my language ability wasn't that good. And a perfect example of communication is so much more than words. Like we, we had a great time. We're laughing, had no problem communicating with these guys because they were and gals. There was a good mix or whatever uh, because they were so open and friendly, you know. And also, I love when you destroy these myths as well, where like people so often, myself included, sometimes talk about how shelt like again how sheltered or reserved japanese people can be yeah. where this completely contradicts that like mm -hmm. they approached probably two of the most imposing white dudes that you could imagine and then invited them over to their party so you know you go go and experience it for yourself before you decide how like sheltered or you know withdrawn yeah. people are so that was that was an awesome experience i really like that so um dave do you, do you have any fun like people stories like uh people that you met that like you already told us about that Tomo guy. Do you have any other fun ex stories like that? You know, uh, Tomo for for people in Japan. Yeah, well, people in Japan. You know, recently I met a guy. It was cool in um, Kyoto. Okay. Who I'm making the video for the for this evening for my buddy Drew. Uh, Drew met this guy because he was moving in. He's setting up his like business slash home in this house. Yeah. And it needed to be restored. And this house had this like open space in it and drew be he didn't he hasn't finished his uh degree but he was doing a master's in architecture and through that he was studying jack gardens and because of that he met sano san and sano san is a master japanese gardener and so sano san designed the rock garden i didn't even know this was a thing i didn't know that rocks could be gardens yeah uh, he he designed the uh the garden in Drew's new business slash home. And so it was really interesting talking to him because he had all these insights about that kind of thing. Like he was talking about, you know, these these cool philosophies about how you think that only plants need water, but rocks need water too. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, you're like looking so deep for the meaning of it. But all it means is he like he put water on rocks in the garden and it looked way cooler. I was like, oh, that's such a like, you know, clear mindset that like makes you realize these things. So he was he was like this cool, like smash of, you know, good culture when I went to Kyoto and is sort of an example of I think Japan has a reputation for these sort of artisans, these people who've like, like I said, for the ramen place where they've done it for generations through their family. Um, and he, he was a great example of that sort of old timey Japan, but still very open because he was, you know, he's hanging out with a bunch of foreigners. So that was really cool. And that's, uh, like, you know, that's another thing where people are like, you know, sometimes they like to just always, uh, you know, they, they always want to like point out something like negative or a bad experience. But I like it how like your first, like, you know, the first thing that you bring up is just like, yeah, this dude like fucking put ro water on rocks it was fucking awesome hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly awesome. yeah 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 he was he was a really interesting dude and then there was like this metal smith who like designed other stuff for him too yeah really really cool people i'm actually working on gathering their information to uh to cite them when i make this video really interesting people that's fucking awesome dude hell to the motherfucking yeah yeah so dude mm -hmm. uh why don't you um why don't you tell me here, uh, <clears throat> why don't you tell me about, how is it like working in Ibaraki? And, uh, like, you know, how's the job? How's, uh, how's your commute? You know, tell, fill us in. Uh, it's, it's, it's glorious. One of the differences that I didn't mention again, not that I had it bad. I had two schools before, but because I'm a direct hire, I am assigned to one school. I have a school. That's it. And of course... That's awesome because then you develop these much clearer, better relationships with the people who are there. And one of the guys there is, uh, well, for privacy reasons, I won't say his name, but one of the teachers there at the school, like I would include him in one of the best teachers I've met in my entire life. And I'm not talking about like in Japan, I'm talking about through my high school, through my university. I could probably count the number of these people on my two hands. It's probably 10 in total that I would give this title for how memorable they are. And it's one of these weird twists. Again, you don't know who 
fine, don't listen to the statistics because, oh, you know, who wants to live in Ibaraki? Well, to meet this guy is being a privilege. And, and he's like, he's his level of energy is either like kicking ass or like otherworldly kicking ass. Like, and to, to make another example, we had things in the school before where the, it would, the, the prompt for the kids was, uh, who do you want to be like, or like, who is somebody that you respect? And this is entirely open-ended. It could be a sports star. It could, it could be uh, a singer. It could be your parents. I saw a shocking number of kids who were writing him. And I was like, God damn, you know, you're having an influence when these, I mean, I feel so bad for the parents. These kids could have chose their parents. They're like, nah, I want to be like my English teacher. Um, and so that's really, really cool. The, um, the school environment is really amazing. I feel like, you know, I pinch myself. The the people are so wonderful there. Without going on, it it is that is one part of my life that really is sunshine and rainbows. The school is amazing. I'm I'm very grateful for it. What about your commute? How far or how far away or how close is it? Like, you know, is it like some people have to commute like an hour each way and Th That's true. That's true. Um all the, again, whether I lucked out or whatever you want to call it, I am 15 minutes on the dot away from my school and that's Son like good bitch. yeah i actually like i think having like the micro commute would almost i wouldn't like that i hate like you're up boom you're at work mm -hmm. where with this i get this little bit of like space between when i've woke and when i think about getting there and i'm like basically ready when i arrive so it's good 15 minutes that's good that's awesome dude so let's talk about the place that you live in do you like it what's good what's bad about it and if you don't mind telling us how much is the rent? Yeah, sure. I've done. Uh, I've done. Maybe I'll send this to you if people want to check out in the links for this. I've done a, an apartment tour for this. Another benefit of living somewhere that is undesirable is the rent is goddamn amazing. Like I lived in a place previous to this that was less than half the space and cost more money per month. And this building was, I mean, now it's 2017. When I moved into this building, I was the first tenant to live here. It was made in 2016. So I live, it's in a 50 square meter, like 50, whatever, uh, one LDK. Uh, it's It's got a sunroom, which I, I should probably put a chair in to read or something. The living room's great. It's more than I need. I got like the full size bedroom. I got the walk-in closet. Uh, like I say, it was built in 2016. So it's awesome. And I pay uh 59,000 yen a month for it well, and the old like 600 yeah. bucks a month pretty much guys. yeah basically that's it 600 bucks a month that's right that's it so uh so you like it you like it feels it, it, deep feels good deep down deep in my plum deep in my I, uh, plums. I i feel excellent about this place uh almost like the job i'm always pinching myself like don't forget where you just live don't forget in case you're getting bitter with this place it's it's awesome of course like there's other things because you dream right what's the point of having small shitty little dreams you have huge <laughs> dreams yes. and i think about like uh you know I'd, I'd love to own a penthouse apartment on like a crazy skyscraper in tokyo because that yeah. would be amazing yeah but but for the time being this is good it's good that's awesome so dave what's uh so i guess there's only two questions left in the interview and that is would you recommend somebody live there? Why? Why not? Like, is the first place any like first place to live in Japan? They live in. They have the chance to live in Ibaraki. Should they? Yes or no? I'll take a strong stance and say no. I would say if you could go somewhere, go go somewhere that's more of a population center, mm. just to, to really throw yourself in and be around so much more variety. Where this, yes, being in the countryside is its own experience, but it's a much more laid out, you, you experience less in the same period of time, where I would, I would like save this for once you have like gone in a little more adventuresome, gone to the city, you know, live downtown somewhere, something like that. So no, I would not recommend starting out here. Go somewhere that's got a little more edge to it to begin with. And, uh... If anything, then you'd appreciate this that much more when you came, but you wouldn't run the risk of some people, I think, who come to Japan, get put in the countryside, and they're like, oh, it's just boring in Japan, which is totally not true. It's like if, if anybody's lived in a city in Japan, they know that that's the exact opposite. Yeah, so, I mean, it's one of those places that you're not really going to appreciate it until you've lived somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, I guess that answers the question for that one, and 
I guess the final question for Dav is, Dave, what are your future plans? Are you gonna? Are you, I'm gonna die in Japan. Are you gonna die in Japan? What are you gonna do, Dave? What's? I'm not gonna die. Yeah, uh, no, that's my goal. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, I've got long-term goals. Yeah. I ain't gonna die. <laughs> you got long, I'm gonna download my shit into yeah. AI, motherfucker. I'm gonna be fine. I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. I'm long, 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 short-term goals. Uh, will be well. I mean, I'm telling you about it, Sam. I basically, I've been in the process. I've I've read this book. It's called The Alchemist, mm-hmm. and I liked kind of one of the ideas in The Alchemist is that the guy says you should pay attention to the omens, and that's basically to put it more flatly. When you see opportunities in your life, look for them. And that's the difference between somebody who has opportunities and doesn't, is that actually we probably are given equal opportunities, given a certain social strata or whatever that occurs in life. We're given equal opportunities, but the difference is, did you notice them when they went by? And really, they can they can be anything. And one of the things that's happened to me in the past while was, there's this channel I really like, because he does this cool like Blade Runner music, chilled out, cool like stuff. He's called Letters from Japan, he commented on my videos for ages, and then I discovered he's a professor here in Japan. He's got a master's degree, and he teaches. Oh, shit. He, and, messi- he commented on one of my videos recently. I didn't even... Oh, shit. He's your friend? Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he's he's a great guy, like a really great guy. And yeah. I talked to him, and when I did, he was like, oh, I was like, dude, I can't do it. I couldn't do a master's degree. And he's like, why? And I was like, well, my GPA is too low. He was like, no, it doesn't mean anything. Basically, they want to know, especially because if you've come to Japan, one of the biggest things for a master's of education is have you taught which when you're starting is like how the hell am i supposed to have taught but it's like when you've come to japan it's a no-brainer so i was already scratching my head i was like oh maybe i should you know pay attention to the omens and then i just went to kyoto and one of the first friends of my friend that i met there it was like a lightning strike i met him and he was like, oh, hey, what's your name? What's your name? I was like, cool. I was like, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm a professor here. I was like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, do you have your master's? I was like, no. And he's like, you need to get your master's. I was like, that's it. I was like, the universe has basically slapped me in the face and said, this is an opportunity. Don't ignore this. So short, long-term plan right now is to uh, apply and be rejected until I can find a place in a master's program uh, that I would be able to do for distance education and take over the world with YouTube, continue to evolve my uh, editing and cinematography and stuff like that, and continue to write. And uh, this list will get really long. So basically, that's it. Education and uh, world domination through YouTube, which is both I love. So it's good. Are you going to move out of Japan or are you going to stay in Japan? Oh, that yeah, no. I uh, I definitely have decided that permanent residency is uh, is in my future. That's something I want to do because I, I, I love it here. I love even more now, it's that sort of thing, when I I go back now, if I ever visit to Canada, it's amazing, like I was bummed out when I was looking at the end of my time in Japan, when I didn't know if I was be here, because part of me was like, yeah, I'm gonna go back to Canada, but then the other part was like, but then it's gonna stop being special going back to Canada, because you're gonna Mm. be there all the time. And so now, when I go back, it's like this glorious celebration, like my, my brother's, I'm, I'm gonna get all sentimental. <laughs> my my yeah. brothers both have kids; they got children, and so each time I go back, it's like super meaningful that I see them grow a little bit more each time, and it's incredibly special. So, I want to be here for all the amazing opportunities that it affords me, and I like how it actually makes when I return to where I'm from that much better. But yeah, I, I want to be here for the long run, and I ain't leaving as long as I haven't mastered the language. And then once I mastered the language, I'm not going to want to leave. So that's it. So he is going to possibly, if he does not find a way to become a, a robot, he will be dying in Japan. <laughs> dying in, that's how you're going to end <laughs> all of this. Eh? All your interviews will be another one. You should mark it on the board. We have 10 people dying in Japan. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole, uh, I think I mentioned this in one of the other podcasts, but the reason why I wanted to do this, Dave, was because, um, one of the people who I really respected that got me the whole reason why I started YouTube was because there was a guy named Tokyo Kuni, and you know Tokyo Kuni, 
Did he uh, die in on Japan? YouTube? No, he did not. Uh, you don't know? Okay, well, anyway. Uh, no, I, I, search, I know of him. but I kill I, you. I no, he didn't die in Japan, but he told me um, he's back in America because, like, family shit or whatever, right? Yeah. He had to go back. But it's like, you know, he told me that the worst thing about living in Japan, and he tells everybody this, is that you see people come and go that are gaijin here. And, oh. uh, you know, it sucks because, you know, you it's so easy to make Japanese friends, but it's... um. It's super, super easy to make really cool, really... I mean, it's just... You're automatically friends with other guys when you meet them just because you're like, you're in the same boat as me, whatever, it's cool. And, you know, it's different kind of hangouts and stuff. And uh, anyway, the point is, is that... He said the worst thing about being in Japan is that you meet these really cool other fucking foreigners and then they leave. And I wanted to make this podcast to kind of like show to people that I'm like, listen... I'm. I just turned thirty, and I realize I'm gonna be in Japan probably my whole life if I can help it. And I'm gonna die here. <laughs> I'm gonna die here. And uh, <laughs> and the thing is, is that you don't. This is 2016. We have internet. We have all these resources that people. When he first came here, 17. Yeah, 2017. It's. But it's like we have all these resources that obviously people who moved here originally didn't have, and we have this chance to develop all these really deep and meaningful relationships. And like one of the ways I can do that is like you know if I make a podcast. Of, about 47 different prefectures that's 47 different people and different prefectures that i'm gonna be able to know and like some of these people are here they're lifers they're gonna stay and i just i want to show people that are coming here that are like me that are that might turn into people like you like you know i came to japan with no doubt in my mind i want to be here forever but i mean some people like you they come and they're like well let's taste the waters and it's like actually the waters are pretty good here i like i'm gonna stay in these waters for a bit and uh for indefinitely and um I just want to prove with this podcast, uh, everybody, that, listen, if you have always been dreaming about coming to Japan, if you are one of those supposed weeboos, but you're going through it, you're going through college, you're getting all your shit done, you're moving out of your fucking house, you're saving up money, like, there are plenty of people like you who came to Japan, and they're still here, and you get to be one of those lucky people that's going to be those people in the future, and also people that are currently here that don't have friends, or people are moving, or whatever, and they're missing, they're just lonely or whatever like you know they get this this image of like hey this person's in my prefecture and they're here for a while and my shit ain't that bad <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so um i don't know that's that's one of the big reasons because you get to meet all different kinds of people different strokes different folks and that's another of them you know I, I could jump in there very very quickly that's something that I, I forgot like i mean because we didn't say like we did actually why do i like japan yeah it's one of these subtle things where what i like about japan too is that when you're in Canada, it's multi-ethnic. It is just in the same way that the States is, but they're all Canadians, you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, everybody looks ethnically different and that's cool. That's its own thing, but they're all Canadians where when you meet people in Japan, it's an insane international expat community. It's like, you're like, this person could be from anywhere and they usually are. It is not like so calm i know very few canadians which is really cool like i like that i like that i meet people from england from america from uganda from like anywhere in the world it's a really it is a truly diverse community because it's not that they've all assimilated to whatever culture um they're they're still taking you know all these different places i like that it's good i I remember the first thing somebody asked me when I first came to Japan, I lived in a guest house with all these different fucking people. They were like, what do you like about Japan? I was like, I like that I get to meet foreigners from all around the world. I didn't get yeah. to meet any of these people when I lived in fucking, you know, back home. So Definitely, definitely. So, Dov, I guess this is the end of the podcast where I get to, where Dave, the guests, gets to plug whatever they need to plug at the bottom. And uh, Dave's got some really interesting shit, and I'm going to let him share that with you guys right now. So the floor is yours, Troopin. There you go. Okay. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, if you want to check out some cool free content, I'm always working on my channel. That's Dave Trippin. So head over there. Uh, Got some cool playlists. That's a great place to start. There's like life and travel. And then if uh, you're a foodie, I got a food playlist there that you can check out. I'm going around all these places in Tokyo and wherever else. Um, In the link to the description of any of my videos, there's a link. If you're into uh, horror, I've got my book that's available on Amazon. Uh, I have a Patreon account, and actually brainstorming with Sam, one thing that I didn't mention earlier in this, a big passion of mine is photography. And I've always wanted to share that photography with people, but not really known how to do so. And the last month, I've been working out paths of distribution, 
And so very shortly on Patreon, a part of my reward system is going to be prints from Japan. So if you're like into Japanese photography and you want something with a little more personal touch than going to like a poster store and picking it up, check out my Patreon and you'll be able to see some of the like the cool prints that I, I've made available. Like, for example, recently I went to the cultural capital of Japan and went to Kyoto and there's a bunch of beautiful pictures that came out of that. So, yeah, book Patreon in my uh, YouTube channel. Check them all out. Or just drop me an email if you got questions about Japan, and I'm more than happy to answer them. Yeah, guys, and all the links and everything to get in contact with Dave and check out his shit will be down in the links uh, below. And uh, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or uh, <laughs> Facebook or YouTube, hopefully it'll be on iTunes soon enough, and that will be in the description probably. I don't know how iTunes work, but definitely go check out all of Dave's stuff. He's We both started out as just talking both, Assholes. Talking heads, yeah, talking, talking heads. assholes. And now we, now we actually like to make videos, and we're always trying to get better. And both of our goals are eventually to become big YouTubers in Japan, where we're paying for mm. our lifestyles with YouTube. So yes. show Dave some love. He's one of my good friends. I talk to him almost every day on Skype. Fucking go check out his shit. And then also, if you guys did like this podcast, this podcast is going to be you know this is made possible by awesome fucking viewers of tkyo sam and also the people that support me over at Petri uh, patreon at uh, patreon. patreon i always fuck this part up but anyway if you guys want to love and support the channel even more uh we got plenty of different rewards there for you over at patreon.com slash tkyo sam uh links for that down below as well and uh dave can i get you uh to say stay black before we sign off here stay black stay Everybody black there, stay black <laughs> Anyway, guys, thanks for that, and uh, Dave, uh, stay trooping. I will. I okay. Will. Yeah, buddy. Hey, everybody. Just some last-minute announcements. If you're not already doing it, please consider following us on social media. Links down below. Big thank you to everybody who clicked on the podcast to listen today. Do us a favor. And if you liked this podcast, help us grow by smashing that like button, subscribe button, and subscribe bell to get notified when the new podcast comes out. Did you learn something new on today's podcast? Do you want to hear more? Which out of these three prefectures should we do a podcast on next? Let us know by emailing us at tkyosam at gmail.com. If you are listening to this in your car and you want to conserve your phone data, consider following us on the other podcast platforms. We are currently on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Links down below. Like always, this wouldn't be a Tikyo Sam production without giving a special sweet thank you slash shout out to all of the Tikyo Sam fam who support us over on patreon.com slash Tikyo Sam. Without your support, this podcast would be much harder to produce. Thank you all so much for the support. That's it for this month's Prefecture Podcast. What did you think of it? Good? Bad? Let us know in the comment section down below. Finally, we are always looking for new people to interview on this podcast. If you check out the video description below, you can find out what prefecture we still need to find people to interview for. If you know somebody, let us know by emailing us at tikyosam at gmail.com. Like always, this has been the Where or Come From Japan podcast. Thank you all for watching, and most importantly, stay black.